they will compete for a championship. And I think Jared Goff is that quarterback, not only for this season, but next season and seasons beyond. He's missing guys that are butt booty naked wide open, and he can't hit those guys. So is he the quarterback for six years? The answer is no. If he gets him in the playoffs this year, Braylon, yeah. he's going to get paid. Goff can be okay. He's not a guy that's going to take you to that next level and win a Super Bowl by no means. However you feel about the Detroit Lions this year aside, I think this football team, this organization, is about to go on a run here and compete for a championship over the next four to six years. Yes. You agree with that? 100%. Where are you on that? Yeah, they definitely have the potential to do so, yes. Is Jared Goff the quarterback for the next four to six years? I think we have all come in to this season and again, it's only been two games, but we've all come into this yeah. season, fair to say, Jared Goff has a stopgap quarterback Yes. Uh, for the Detroit Lions. Next year's draft, filled with quarterbacks. You go get your quarterbacks, and your quarterback of the future is in that draft. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think Jared Goff, at 27 years old, is the quarterback of the Detroit Lions, not only for this season, but next season and seasons beyond. I think he is the guy for this franchise over the next four to six years that this organization is going to go on a run. They will compete for a championship, and I think Jared Goff is that quarterback. I went back and I looked at some of his stats over the course of his career, and of course, I wrote down a laundry list of notes on it and left it at my desk at Fox 2 earlier today, so I apologize for that. But I was really surprised. He started four full seasons in L.A. Three of those seasons, uh, one of them he was sixth in passing yards, fourth in passing yards, third in passing yards. That was 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. In three of those four years, he was a top six guy passing. In three of those four years, he was a top ten guy throwing touchdowns. And clearly, if you build a team around Jared Goff, or if you build a football team, Jared Goff can clearly be a quarterback that can get you to a championship. The same guy that helped build that Los Angeles Rams team that got to a Super Bowl is, oh, by the way, now the general manager of the Detroit Lions and building this organization the same way they built that Super Bowl caliber team. Uh, Matthew Stafford did not win a Super Bowl until he had an entire team, not a player yeah. like Calvin Johnson. It took an entire team. And I think Jared Goff can be and is that guy for this team. I have totally changed my opinion on Jared Goff. He's the quarterback for this franchise. You do not need a quarterback in next year's draft. In round one, I'll say. I do think you should draft a quarterback and groom a backup uh, or sign a backup. But nonetheless, I don't think you need to take your first pick in next year's draft and get a quarterback. I disagree. I don't necessarily think you need to get a quarterback next year, but I disagree. Like you're talking about a guy who yesterday we were sitting on this very desk and we were comparing who's a better quarterback between Jared Goff and Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins ain't winning no Super Bowl no time soon. Who's a better quarterback, Jared Goff or Carson Wentz? Carson Wentz ain't won no quarterback no time, no Super Bowl anytime soon. My now, answer to those questions clearly was I understand, golf, but though. the fact that we can even ask that question. Like, we're not asking that question, uh, who's a better quarterback, Carson Wentz or Patrick Mahomes? Who's a better quarterback, Carson Wentz or Just, Justin Herbert? We're not asking those type of questions, but we're asking those type of questions about Jared Goff. For as much as you make about Jared Goff having six touchdowns, He's 57% completion rates right now. Worst of his career, by the way. And he's, a, he, he's a 62, 64, 67, 67 guy. And 57. And this year through two games, 57. Let's see where it shakes out at the well, end of the year. Well, currently through two games, you said that the Detroit Lions are fourth in the power ranking. So, yeah. so stick by him. After two games, the Detroit Lions, 57, I mean, Jerry Goff, 57% completion rates. He's missing throws. He's overthrowing. And it's not like he's missing throws in tight windows. It's not like he's throwing giving guys 50-50 balls or there's pass interference. He's missing guys that are butt booty naked wide open. And he can't hit those guys. So is he the quarterback for six years? 
The answer is no. Now, could he be the quarterback for this year and the following? 100%. Could he be a quarterback that gets you to the playoff this year, sneaks in as a wild card? I think so. Could he be the quarterback next year that takes you to that next step, maybe even get to a semifinal game? We'll see how things shakes out once Jamison Williams comes into play. But I think maybe he can even be that, though. But there are quarterbacks that can get you to that far. Kirk Cousins can get you to semifinals. Like, you know, Carson Wentz can get you to the semifinals. Jared Goff has proven he can get to the Super Bowl. All those stats you name, once again, offensive play, they were amazing on the offense side. And it looks like the Detroit Lions can be that. But great quarterbacks take you to that next step, and they win games. Despite the play of the offense, despite the play of the play caller, yeah, Sean McVay, he pooped the bed against the New England Patriots in that Super Bowl. But that's where a great quarterback takes that next step and says, you know what, I'm not worried about that. We'll make plays. So I think he's definitely the perfect situation, as you called it, a stopgap for the next two years. But they got to be looking for a situation like Russell Wilson, where we'll get to, not necessarily him because it's not working in Denver. It may not all be his fault. But they got to get to a situation in two years where you're trading one of those quarterbacks that don't, don't want to get out of somewhere that's going to be good. Maybe it's a Justin Herbert. Maybe the situation doesn't work out in L.A. Maybe it just doesn't. He can't get past the Kansas City Chiefs. Maybe it's Justin Herbert. But it's going to be a situation like that because you're finally going to put your team, talking about the Detroit Lions, in a situation where we got everything. We just need that quarterback, kind of like the Rams did with Matt Stafford. Matthew Stafford won his first Super Bowl last year because he had a complete team, like he was saying. He had a great defense. He had a great defense here with Detroit one year, maybe two. Yeah. But the offense was lacking. So he didn't have it all here. He got it in L.A. Now, going forward, you said Carson Wentz and uh, Kirk Cousins, they're not going to win a Super Bowl. But if they had the defense that Matthew Stafford and others had, they could damn well win a Super Bowl. And that's what Jared Goff is. If he does good this year and gets you in the playoffs, he's going to get paid. So then he is going to be your quarterback going forward. If he gets him in the playoffs this year, Braylon, yeah. he's going to get paid. Now, you know, I already said we wanted Malik Willis. We yeah. wanted Tua the year prior to that. Remember Tua, he can't hit the broad side of a barn. No, all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, he's a freaking star. Yeah, but there, there's So, a... Goff can be okay. I dis- he's not Brady. I'm sorry. He's right. not Brady. He's not Mahomes. Right. He's not those guys. Right. We know that. But he is a solid quarterback. I disagree with the Tua comparison. Tua's in year one. I mean, your Tua's in year two right now, and everybody, they jumped on the wagon of some analyst, some analyst that made a comment that said Tua can't get the ball down the field. Tua is this, and everybody rode that wave, and everybody is saying that. That's not the same. What you're seeing from Tua is the same person that Tua always was. He now has a team around him. As it relates to Jared Goff, if Jared Goff was that guy, then Sean McVay wouldn't have got rid of him then Sean McVay wouldn't have let him go. Sean McVay wouldn't have lost faith in him because they got the same team that Matt Stafford had. And obviously you... you, you he put, fell in love with Stafford. I understand that, but that wasn't... They, he already loved Stafford. He already was out of love with Jerry Goff because he knew Jerry Goff wasn't the quarterback to get you over the hill. You don't wake up all of a sudden in one year, in year eight, and say, you know what, I'm the guy that won the Super Bowl now. You are who you are. And Jerry Goff, although he's definitely a quarterback that has had some success in the past, He's not a guy that's going to take you to that next level and win a Super Bowl by no means. When I watch him in the huddle, he doesn't have that type of command where you look at him and say, you know what, that's the guy. Yeah, he can win a game. He can even sneak and win a game that he shouldn't win. They almost beat the, uh, beat the Rams last year in Los Angeles. So he can almost win a game like that. But he's not the guy that I ever fear, and he's not the guy that I think the Detroit Lions need in year three of this Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell regime. Greg Hartman on the Woodward Sports Chat says, would we go after Lamar? Look, and that is one of those shrewd moves uh, that I would not put it past Brad Holmes I told you you won't be there at the end of this year. My prediction was Tampa, because Tom's done at the end of this year, at least for the sake of his marriage, he better be done at the end of this year. Tom's done. And the disrespect to Lamar Jackson is very real with the Baltimore Ravens. He beefed up in size. He's a little slower now. Hey, look, man, he's got to make a move and make a move soon. I think it's going to be Tampa, but I would love to have him here. There is no quarterback in this draft class, not C.J. Stroud, not uh, what's the kid's name Bryce from Alabama, Young. Bryce Young. Uh, there Caleb is Williams. nobody in this draft that I would rather have than Jared Goff next year. Really? Nobody. No, no, no. Then I'd rather have You're him. jumping to conclusions right I'm now. I'm not. Why? You are. Who? Who? 
Who do you, who the kid you from Boston College, and, and it's and you don't even know his name. No, I don't know his name. I they, know. Listen, there's going to be like five quarterbacks by the end of this year that are going to be can't miss well, projects. But what did Braylon tell you? What did Braylon tell you about college quarterbacks? You got to win. You got to win. Boston College don't win. If you are, he left Notre Dame to go I, to BC. I understand that. And he's it, just got he's got the the size. He's got the big arm. I and, understand you know, forget that. Me for, forgetting his name, no, Phil would, Phil Phil McCrevis or something. I, I, tell, <laughs> I tell you like this: Don't do the same thing to Bryce Young that we're doing to Tua. Bryce Young is a problem. Now, with that being said, I would take Bryce Young. Jerkovich. I would take Bryce you Young go. over uh, J- uh, Jared Goff. But after that. I wouldn't take another quarterback over uh, Bryce Young. Again, just the thing with Jerkovich, and I, I like the Boston College kid too, but he's 1-2 and two on the year. Losses against Rutgers without their quarterback and eight starters uh, at Virginia Tech, uh, and then they beat Maine. I mean, uh, uh, Braylon is... You know what you got to do to beat Maine? Braylon Nothing. has totally <laughs> sold me <laughs> on this. Braylon has told me so, totally sold me. If you are a great quarterback in college, I guarantee you you'll have a winning record. Or, or you have done some significant winning. If you no. are not, you are not going to make it in the NFL. It is very rare that a kid in makes it in the NFL, a quarterback makes it in the NFL that didn't win in college at the quarterback yeah. position. Yeah, no, it, you know, it's easy to poke at, look at Tom Brady and say, oh, well, Tom Brady didn't win. He didn't do anything. Look, whenever they put him in, Tom came back. What was Tom's nickname at Michigan when he split time with Drew Henson? It was Captain Comeback. He's got to come back. He was coming back all the time, getting in games, winning games. They won the Big Ten Championship three times while he was there. And, oh, by the way, his last year there, they won a BCS Championship. I mean, excuse me, damn sure won a BCS Championship game. But they won a BCS game against Alabama, who had, who had Sean Alexander, by the way, one of the best running backs in the last couple of 20-year era. Hey, just by the way, uh, just to finish my thought. If you're giving me Lamar Jackson next year, uh, yes, then Jared Goff is not the quarterback. I, I, yeah, I would take Lamar. Yeah, I definitely would. I definitely would. Tampa would too. Someone said Josh Allen didn't win in college, so I'd have to look I back said, at that. Uh, it, it, nothing is one hundred percent. No, nothing is. Nothing is one hundred percent. There's always going to be a caveat. There's always going to be an outlier. There's always. But I just don't want you to sell. You're selling high. I mean, just just a couple of months ago, we wanted to get this guy out of here because he had small hands and he fumbles. No. His I, hands didn't grow. Exactly. Either way. Uh, and I reserve saying. the right to change my mind Yes, on that. you do. Of course. You know, we all do. I'm not, just because I had a bad take doesn't yeah. mean no. because I said it, I got to dig even further and say, oh, no. It's not a bad you take. Know. It's your opinion right, right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm just saying about the Malik Willis at two. That was obviously a bad take. But I still like Malik Willis a lot. But just because I said something back then doesn't mean I have to continue to say it just because I said it the first time. But that's what they tell us that you know, we're locked into it, man. <laughs> yeah, we can't, be, as far as locked into as that. far as the people listening, we're locked into I that. I do love Malik Willis, there though, and go. I think he so, will be I hope. Uh, a pro bowler in this league.